G'day guys, Stephen Ford, Affordable Property and Finance. I hope you're all well. Today is Wednesday morning. It is about 6.30. I've done my paddle for the morning, got out on my surf craft and um, I've done about 8K paddle. So just before I get back in the car and head home, I thought I'd do a quick educational video about how much I can borrow. Uh, there's a couple of things to consider with uh, understanding how much you can borrow. First and foremost, those online calculators are wonderful. They're a good indication, but they are not accurate. They are not overly accurate. They are a good indication as to what you might be able to borrow. Uh, what you can borrow, getting more accurate, uh, you really need to speak to a broker. So give me a call. Or um, uh, you, you need to have a full assessment of all your income, expenses, um, so that it's more accurate than just a bit of a rough picture. They're not far off. There's another way you can calculate your borrowing capacity, which is really easy. And again, it's not to be an indication as a, a firm number, but it's giving you a guide. And, and that is the income ratio. And generally about a five to one uh, income ratio would give you a, an estimate or a, a rough number. So if you earn $100,000, then you could, uh, with a reasonable guess, say that your borrowing capacity will be about $500,000. If you and your partner uh, combine their income, it's $200,000 income, then you might be able to borrow up to a million. And then uh, also if you had a rental property or other income sources, uh, then you'd add all of that together and you could look at a one to five income ratio. For some clients, they might have very low expenses. They might not socialize, they may cook at home, uh, they may not have large transport costs or they're covered by uh, their employer. There's a, a number of potential reasons why someone's living expenses might be low. And then if they didn't have a credit card because they just didn't like those types of uh, facilities or uh, didn't have any car loans or uh, didn't have any childcare payments, all sorts of things which might mean that that five to one income ratio could well and truly go up a lot higher. Um, it, it can go up as high as seven to one, but that's in very few cases. Now, once you get up to that level, um, the banks are now looking at debt to income ratio. At the seven to one debt to income ratio, uh, your application would be declined unless if there is extensive reason why uh, the lender should consider that application. And they've put this new debt to income ratio um, uh, as a bit of a threshold for now to stop people getting into too much debt. The responsible lending um, strategies have to be improved and this is one of them, making sure that people aren't borrowing too much and putting themselves in, in unnecessary financial stress. So I hope that helps, uh, a little bit of a guide. You've got your online calculators, you've got your income ratio of five to one, which is a bit of an in indicator. And then, um, and then also understanding that you're probably not ever going to go above seven to one for your debt to income ratio. Send us an email guys, like, share, give us some feedback. If there's something else you wanna learn or hear about, then uh, please throw it in the comments. And I look forward to our next little video. Thanks.